let's talk about labeling your animation drawings. The first thing you want to do, you've got your drawings, and I've got drawing one. My little bouncing ball guy. Generally, as I'm animating, I'll be indicating the numbers up, up here in the corner. It's like one. You know, as I'm animating, and I've figured out what keys, you know, what keys I'm going to be using. So this one will be. Uh, the next key is five, so I've indicated five up here. You know, a lot of times I'll just be using blue pencil, whatever pencil I've got. You know, and after I've, you know, figured out my timing, you know, I'll be figuring out, oh, what's the timing for, you know, in, in betweens between these two drawings. So I'll go, I'll put my timing chart up here in the corner. So I got one, five, and then say, you know, three is halfway, and we're going to favor, you know, so four. Four, so one, three, four, five. That's our timing chart. We'll go up in that right hand corner of drawing one there. So boom. And you know, if there's dialogue happening, you usually write the dialogue up here. So ah. So that's you know, usually if there's dialogue, it's going to be indicated up here, and you'll usually underline whatever you know, phoneme or actual uh, vowel or whatever it is up there. Um, once you've actually kind of completed your drawings and you're all drawn in and everything, you'll actually indicate the drawing number here. So this would say be B1. Be circled because it's a key. You want your scene and sequence number down here in between your pegs. And then the production number would be over, or production name would be over here, so bouncing ball. Be in between the pegs there. You would actually indicate the uh, peg that this is on, which would be a peg, since it's not moving. It's just a standard thing. Usually if, if it's just a standard 12 field still scene or whatever, you probably wouldn't even have to indicate what peg it is. But if it is a pan scene or if it's somewhere on a, a background, a pan background with a different peg, you would indicate whatever peg it's at right there. So that's basically our, uh, our labeling system for animation drawings. Um, say we've got a an in-between drawing, it's going to be, you know, this would be number four. So this is, say, our breakdown drawing. So a breakdown drawing would actually be underlined instead of circled as, a, as the key was. So when we put our number down in the corner, you know, we underline it since it's a breakdown. And in-betweens would just, you know, so this is and in between would just have the number, you know, say B3 or whatever, written down in the corner. So that's a quick uh, lesson on how to number your drawings. So we have, you know, our temporary numbers up in the corner, timing charts, we've got our dialogue up at the top of the page with the underlined phonemes. Once we're finished and we know what our actual drawing number is, for sure, we can write it in graphite down at the bottom corner with, uh, you know, whatever, this is B, B1, whatever the uh, prefix is. So we've got our peg, A peg, we've got our scene, sequence number, and production number. Another good thing to do, you know, once you've uh, uh, finished off your drawing, is to Use some peg reinforcements just to make sure that the uh, drawing doesn't, the pegs don't tear. I usually use at least two a center and at least one um, peg hole reinforcement. Anyway, that's labeling our drawings.